But God's a good God. I've been saved all day. No evil have I done. I magnify him for his goodness. I glorify the Lord for all that he is to me. Amen. He's a wonderful God. He's awesome. I'm just delighted to be here. I give honor to God and to all the ministers. Amen. Evangelist Sharon Rogers and to everyone that makes this assembly. I'm just, I'm saved. I'm excited about being saved. And if I could say to you all before I get started, good. You are in one of the best moments of your life. Somebody didn't, I didn't get a response. I got that. I'm going to say that one more time. You are in one of the best moments of your life. Also, why you say that? You have to get where you are in order to get what you're going to get. You have to get where you are. For God to be able to do what he's going to do. So you thought you were messed up. But no, it was a setup. So you could get your deliverance. If the door wasn't presented, then you can't go in. So what you're going through is the door to your deliverance. But now you got to have the boldness Step through it. Don't worry about what you're going through. It's going to blow your mind when you see the other side. (laughs) Don't compare the task with the reward. Because, see, he has a way of giving you joy unspeakable and full of glory. When you're at your weakest, you're at your strongest. When you thought you were at your lowest, you're at your highest. It's just a matter of having the wherewithal to let God do and be God. He's awesome. Don't y'all worry about the baby. She's just a baby crying. Don't, 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 don't get up. I guarantee you they can fix her up. I know some of y'all get locked in, you ex-mamas. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all, all y'all over there trying to figure out, well, maybe she wet, maybe she hungry, maybe she doing it now. Let the baby alone. The devil take one baby's cry and set up and knock the whole service off track. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But I appreciate God this morning. The Lord woke me up early this morning. Had a good prayer. Had a real good prayer. I was telling one of the ministers I... I've been battling with something in my body, and I came and I told God, I said, Lord, I've said this before. Is there anything man can do that you can't? And I was on my knees praying this morning, and the power of God shook me so anybody ever played ball or got your nose bumped and you can smell blood. The Holy Ghost shook me so I could smell the smell of blood in my nose. But... When he finished shaking me, what I was dealing with was gone. The devil trying to tell me, he said, you're going to have to have surgery. I said, you're lying. The truth ain't in you. That shoulder still works. And I got up this morning refreshed. I'm telling you, God's awesome. That's why the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. It's, are possible to them that believe. Don't put your situation so far out there like God can't get it. And sometimes it ain't good to even give it all the juice again. Give it, give it a, a, a plain Jane thing. Just don't even bring the focus in good. Just, just say it and leave it. Knowing this, that we're more than conquerors. Is that all right? And sometimes when you know what the thing is, as long as you know what the thing is, don't worry about everybody else having to have the fullness of it. You know what it is. 
And then when you and God got it together, then when you get your deliverance, then you can, just, sometimes you don't even have to say nothing. Because, see, a lot of times we see more than you think we see. But we know when deliverance comes, too. Well, amen. This morning, the Lord gave me a message. And I'm going to say to you all, don't nobody say, well, pastor took it out on me. Don't let the devil talk to you. So all I got is a piece of paper. Show you all something this morning in scripture. Y'all notice what I preached the other week? Last week? It still won't mix. I don't care how you put them together. Sin, the world, and church won't mix. Uh huh. Some people, the reason they're going through, you ain't living everything you know. Oh, Pastor, we're getting ready to go into the Christmas holiday. I'm, this is the spirit of giving. I'm giving you what you need. I'm giving you your present this morning. And a whole lot of y'all, when you start doing better, a lot of stuff you're dealing with going to leave. Yes, sir. See, you mess up when you profess Christ. If you don't profess Christ, you still messed up, but you mess up worse when you profess Christ. Because when you profess Christ, you're saying that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. When folk get up and say, I think I give honor to God who's the head of my life. You know what you're saying? That means he is the one that's in charge. But when he's the head of your life and you don't live that, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. And all liars are going to have that part in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. Y'all hear my daughter testify about me. Y'all know me. She know me. I ain't got time for no junk. And just because I don't say something, that don't mean I know something. Sometimes God's giving the fool a chance to get it together before he put the whammy on you. I know y'all remember that car, that little, just to have that commercial, and that little rat was dancing around that cheese, that rat trap with that cheese on it. And he, they playing that music, and he was just dun, 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 he was just dancing. And after a while, you hear something say, pop. They didn't show it, but that trap got him. You listen to me and listen to me real good. Anytime God spends his anointing on you to touch and heal your body and then you turn your back on him or don't give him his just due. When it comes back, it may not be the same thing because he delivered you from that thing. But whatever it comes back, it's going to come back worse. And when God collects, he's going to collect. And when he start collecting, can't nobody stop him. I know somebody said, well, pastor, you know, we're getting ready to go into the Christmas. I'm, I'm, I'm really, believe me, I'm in a Christmas mood. I'm giving this morning. Bowls and ribbons. Uh-huh. Ain't no fat man, no suit, no red suit and all that junk. Ain't no Rudolphs and stuff. But I'm promising every one of you going to get a present today. And it's going to be a good one. If you've been naughty or nice, uh huh. I'll throw that in there for some of y'all. Get that. Now, let's remember something. God backs up nothing but his word. And just like he backs his word up on the positive, he backs his word up on the negative. That's right. That's right. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Amen. He don't sleep, he don't slumber. But this morning, I want to encourage us that's living right. I know people say, well, Pastor, you're going, you're going out on whatever. I look at the hole over there. There are some people out of town. I got crazy now. But God had to sweep some mess out of here. Thank God you weren't in the mess. Now he's ready to start doing some filling. One of the hardest jobs I had as a carpenter was trying to remodel something. Sometimes you have to make a decision on what you could keep and what you couldn't keep. And sometimes you had lumber that you couldn't buy anymore, but you didn't have enough of it to do what you had to do, so you had to make a decision. Do I save this or get rid of it? If you don't have enough to do with you, you know what you do? You get rid of it and go with something else. That's all right. Now, this morning, I'm going to take you all to, I'm going to brought your Bibles. Hold them up and let me see them right quick. I know some of y'all thought I wasn't going to say that. Hold them up and let me see them. Uh, Brooklyn, you better be. Hold it up high. Amen. Yes. Take them down. We're going to the word of God. I'm going to take you to a book this morning 
that not very many people, saints of God, go to. Go into the book of Ezra. Ooh. The Old Testament. Old Testament. Ezra over there by Second Chronicles. I didn't say Corinthians. Some of y'all in the New Testament. I didn't say Corinthians. I said Chronicles. Chronicles. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and you go on up and go on up. You're going to run into, if you're going to run into a first Chronicles, it's got to be a second one, right? <laughs> oh, I hear all kind of rattling up in here this morning, flipping the pages. That's a book called Ezra. E-Z-R-A, Ezra. Y'all heard that before? And there's a seventh chapter in the book of Ezra. And I want to just, before I get into this, the Lord didn't give me to preach about until a child is born, until a son is given. We didn't hear that plenty. And folks still ain't living right. We, we need to get our act together. We, don't, we need to go out of this year right. Don't go into 2020 wrong. Amen. But I'm going to show you some of the blessings of living saved. And see, Zerubbabel and Nehemiah and them, they, they came back and they built the temple. And we spoke about Cyrus in the 44th and the 45th book of Isaiah. And Cyrus gave a decree. And the Lord called Cyrus his anointed. And Darius sent it on down the line. And now we in a, a time of another king. Some want to call his name Xerxes. Some want to call him or, or, or Zacharias. But we're going to deal with this king today. We're going to call his name Zacharias. And they found the word of God. And Ezra was a scribe. And Ezra was a man that God wanted to do something in a hurry. Huh. He was a, a quick scribe. He was a good scribe. He was one ready to do. And everything that God had said that he was going to do through Cyrus, it passed on down the line. Darius brought it to pass, and now we find Ezra. And we're going to go to the seventh chapter of the book of Ezra. I'm going to start reading at the sixth verse. Read, I'm going to let you read it, but my lips is burning this morning. I'm going to let you read it. Ezra 7 and 6 says what? This Ezra uh -huh. went up from Babylon. Read the Bible. And he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses. You know what he said? He was a ready scribe. That means, God. He was a ready scribe. Wouldn't it be something if God had some ready singers, ready preachers, ready musicians, ready ushers, ready saints? Just cocked and loaded, ready to do whatever God say. I ain't getting no help right now. Some of y'all, some of y'all acting in a sort of retarded mode. Even your response is sort of delayed. Your amen come out sort of handicapped. <laughs> you got to learn. See, when you're hot and it's fervent, your time is amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Preach, Reverend. You with him. You with the preacher in the seat with him, behind the podium with him. You following him word for word. You already seeing where he's going. And you see the picture. Woo! You got, come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Get it on out there. Say it. You're ready, saying. Instead of looking like you got indigestion and waiting until you go, go home and what you going to eat. And fixing your, your braids and all this and your weeds and making sure everything. Ain't nobody looking at you. You ain't that hot. Uh-huh. I could just stop. I, that could be a message right there. Just a, He was a ready scribe. That means he was very skillful. He was prepared. He was on point. He was engaged. Ooh. Whatever he did, he was, whatever he did, when it came back to his position and his job, he was locked in. Saints of God, it's time for us to get locked in.
Put on the foolishness. You know what's right and what's wrong. Put on the foolishness. Reason people can't deal with me, they don't like what I stand for. Young preacher called me yesterday after we went off the broadcast. He said, I'm, he said, I've been looking for somebody that's preaching holiness. I've been pastoring 10 years and saying under nobody. He said, but I'm looking for somebody. And I think I found somebody. See, apostle, he said, I need you. Yes, sir. Don't worry, brother. We'll get together. Hallelujah. Folks think they messing up. You just creating space. I remember a young lady years ago, I was working. My son and I, we were doing the uh, service warranty work out in Hackberry Creek. I went to this lady's house, and her husband was the head flight pilot for American Airlines. And I'll never forget when she told me, she said she was born in California, and there was a lot of them. And she was Caucasian, too. And she said when she got 18, she said, Daddy told her, say, you got to move on. We need the space. We let ours hang around. They 25 and still don't have a job and smell it like incense, looking like they're running from the rag man. No intentions of getting better. She said her daddy told her, say, you know what? We need the space. In other words, that bed you in, the other kid, we need the space, so you need to. And she didn't know she married the head flight, flight pilot for American Airlines. See, it ain't about where you start, it's where you're going, where you, where you end up. All of us go through stuff, but you got to take the stuff that you're going through and cultivate it. Yes, sir. Can anybody hear what I say? I said cultivate it. That means you got you to dig it. You got to work it. You got to fertilize it. You got to do whatever you got to do to make it grow. You've got to be able to take your situation and make your situation grow. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? When you are a laborer, you take your situation, cultivate your situation, and now you become a manager. Then you take your situation and cultivate your situation. Now you become the owner of your own company. I didn't feel sorry for none of y'all. Shouldn't have been born. Time and chance happened to us all. It's what you do with yours. You in school, going to school, sleeping at home, and I'm going to feel sorry for you because you didn't apply yourself. If you flunk, you need to be in the, in the ghetto because you didn't try. Folks say, well, if I, if I, if I, no, it ain't got nothing to do with it. Where your mom and them came from and where you live, some of our geniuses, some of our most important people came from obscurity because they wanted something better. Yes, this is what's in your head. What do you want to be? Anybody can just be a nothing. Anybody can go up thinking you're going to live off your body. Let me tell you something, baby. Keep living. You might have some curves now, but I, t I promise you, those curves don't turn to some loops and bumps and stuff. Some of them going to turn into straightaways. Amen, nice. You know what? Amen, get a little shallow. Shallow up in here. Keep living. Think you got them high cheeks and bone. After a while, they'll be down under here. Keep living. You can't prop them up enough for them to stay up there. Yeah. Watch this here. So Ezra, Ezra's got something going here. Let me, let me move on. Come on and read for me, please. Which the Lord of Israel had given. Watch, what did I tell y'all about what scripture said? Every word. Which the Lord of Israel had given. Read the Bible. And the king granted him all his requests. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Everything he wanted, the king gave it to him. Read. According to the hand of the Lord. According to the hand of the Lord. His God upon him. Can anybody? God's doing it. God's hand is upon him. When God's hand is upon you, can't nobody stop you. When God's hand is upon you, you shine out above all other employees. When God's hand is upon you, people can't understand how did you get there. They may know what it costs, but they don't know what you gave for it. Yeah. Uh, come on and read for me. And there went up. Some of the children of Israel. Read the Bible. And of the priests. Yeah. And the Levi Levites. Of, of the Levites. Come on. And the singers. Yeah. And the porters. Uh-huh. And the Nephilims. Read. Unto Jerusalem. Unto Jerusalem. Read the Bible. In the seventh year of Ataris. Come on. The king. I'll let you see it. Read. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month. 
which was in the seventh year of the king. Come on. For upon the first day of the first month, Read. began he to go up from Babylon. He's going up from Babylon. Read. And on the first day of the fifth month, come on. came he to Jerusalem. Came he to Jerusalem. According to the good hand of his God Can upon him. Can you hear what the Bible says? According to what? Read that one more time. The good hand the of good his hand. God. God. Listen, y'all, baby. God got a hand, but then he got a better hand. According to the good hand. That's when God's with you. Read. God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord Ooh. and to do it. Come on. And to teach in Israel statues and judgments. Read. Now, this oh, is the. That's good enough. I'm not going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to just get this set up. Look at verse 10. She read it. But I'm going to break it down. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, to seek the word of the Lord, and not only just look for it, but do it. And not only do it, but teach others. My subject this morning is look for it, do it, teach it. Look for it. Do it. Teach it. It's time for us as people of God to see God. Because when you see God, it does something for you. When you see God, it takes you to another level. When you see God, it puts you in a position where it's no longer about you. You got to get this thing down to the point. Paul told, what did the scripture the Lord told Peter? When thou art converted, strengthen your brother. When you believe it, then tell somebody else. We got to get to the point where we're going to seek God after we seek God. Then what God tell you, do what you found out. And then teach other. Paul told Timothy, take heed to thyself. Take heed to thyself. And the scripture in doing this, you're going to save yourself and them that hear you. You got to give yourself to the word of God. What people don't like, people like to hear the word, but they want to do what they want to do. I ain't getting no help this morning. I ought to get a half amen on this side of the church. They want to they wanna find the word. But they don't want to do what the word say. The Bible says you shall search for me and find me when you shall search for me. How much? With all of your heart. Now, for some of you all that sometimes find it, like Nehemiah, I mean Joshua said that if it seems evil, for you to serve the Lord. If it seems evil. For you to serve the Lord. He said I want you to choose ye. This day. Who you going to serve. Watch what scripture now. I'm going to show you what happened. To Ezra. Now watch what the king said. Verse 11 says what. Now this is the copy. Of the letter that the king of Ezra. Gave unto Ezra. Gave to Ezra the priest. Read. The scribe, uh -huh. even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of the statues of Israel. Listen, listen y'all. This is a pagan king that don't know God. But I want you to listen to what this pagan king and Ezra has a copy of the letter. Read the Bible. Artaxerxes, uh -huh. king of the kings. He says he's king of kings. Come on. Unto Ezra, unto the, Ezra, the priest, read a scribe of the law of the Lord of God. Mm -mm. Come on, to read. King of kings, unto Ezra, the uh -huh. priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven. The God, notice what he's saying. The God of heaven. This is this is King. This ain't no saved king. This is a pagan. Read what he's saying. And at such a time, I make a decree. I'm making a decree that all of the people of Israel read and of his and of his priests read and Levites Levites and my ram. It, those are he has charge over. Read what the Bible which says. Are minded of their own free will to go up to Jerusalem. Go with thee. You, for, you, you can go home. Read for as much as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors. To inquire concerning Judah. Read the Bible. And Jerusalem. Come on. According to the law of thy God, which is in 
thine hand. Read the Bible. And to carry the silver and gold. Y'all better better listen what what happens when you start getting blessed. When you do what God says. Read the Bible. Which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel. Whose inhabitation is in Jerusalem. Hold it. Listen to what he said. And of the priests offering willingly for the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. This is the king said. They're going to give it willingly. Read. And all the silver and gold. How much? All. Come on. The silver and gold. Come on. That thou canst find in all the province of Babylon with the free will offering of the people. And of the priests uh, oh, offering the, willingly. Oh, the, the, the citizens of Babylon are giving free will offerings. Come on. For the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. Uh-oh. Uh, come on. That thou mayest buy speedily. That's how that well, how you gonna do it? Speedily. Don't. This is a pagan king telling Israel we want God's house built and we want it built in a hurry. With this money, bullocks, rams, lambs, with their meat offerings and their drink offerings, Read. and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. Read now, watch verse eighteen. Come on. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee, and to thy brethren, and to thy brethren, to do with the rest of the silver and the gold. That do after the will of your God. Y'all hear verse 18? Let me just read that. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee. And to thy brethren to do with it. To do with the rest of the silver and the gold. That do. He said that do after. I don't think y'all heard what I I, don't, I, don't, I don't really don't think y'all hear it. Listen to this, verse 17. That thou mayest buy speedily with this money, bullocks, rams, lambs, with their meat offering and their drink offering, and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee, to thy brethren, to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, that do after the will of your God. We gonna give you enough silver and gold and whatever you have left in whatever you and your brother and feel is just, y'all just do what you want to. Don't bring it back, just do what you want to. Watch this, watch this. Let me, let, me, let me read this. Verse 19. The vessels also that are given thee for the service of the house of thy God, those deliver thou therefore to the God of Jerusalem. And whatsoever more shall be needed for the house of thy God, which thou shalt have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's And if y'all don't have enough, you can come get it out of my treasure house. You talking about a white Christmas? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And I even, or taxi, the king, do make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river. And whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of God of heaven, shall require of you, it be done speedily. I'm I'm trying to keep from running out of here. Until a hundred talents of silver and to a hundred measures of wheat, to a hundred 
baths of wine to a hundred baths of oil, salt, without prescribing how much. Somebody's foot should have just got a little. See, we're not going to even measure the salt, salt without measuring. We got all that meat to eat, so we don't even try to figure up how many bags of salt. Salt without measure. Mm. For whatsoever is commanded by the, by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for all the house of the God of heaven. Y'all hear me? For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his son? In other words, why should I suffer? Why should God come on me and my boys? Because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Also, we certify you that touching any of the priests and Levites, singles, porters, the Nephthans, or ministers of this house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or customs upon them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen to what he said. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God, that is in thine hand, Set magistrates and judges which may judge all the people that are beyond the river. Gonna teach them, gonna teach them all such as know the law of thy God and teach them to know them not. Teach those folk that don't know him. And whosoever will not, y'all better listen to this part, and whosoever will not do the law of thy God, the law of the king, let judgment be executed how? Speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or the banishment or to confiscation of gods or of goods, on the confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. Can I say it one more time? If you don't do what the man of God tell you to do, he wants you, this is what I want you to have. I want judgment to come speedily. Y'all with me? Whether it be unto death or to banishment, that means they're going to kick you out. Is that all right? Or to the confiscation of whatever you got, we're going to take what you got before we kick you out. Or we're going to put you in prison. I can't do that today. I can't put nobody in prison for being hard-headed, disobedient. Watch this. Woo. And I'm going, and then listen what, look, look what Ezra said in verse 28. And had extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors, before all the king's mighty princes, and I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Look for it. Do it. Teach it. That's all God is saying. God said if you do this I bless you. If you look for it after you look for it and you find it, then do it. And after you find it in your heart that it's right, then you teach somebody else. It's that simple. And God is saying, you know what he's saying to us? And all of these blessings are going to follow. I don't know about y'all, but I, 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 that 10th tenth, that tenth verse, man, that's awesome. And when the Lord told him, say, whatever you have left over, whatever you and the brothers decide to do with it, <laughs> y'all thought I was going, I'm, I'm finished. I'm finished. What, what, 
Whatever left, whatever's left over, whatever you and the brothers, don't y'all send it back. That hundred thousand pieces, that, uh, that, that was that was over a hundred thousand dollars, just silver and a hundred thousand dollars in gold. And he said, and if you don't have enough, just come get it out of my treasure house. Wouldn't it be good if God just wrote you a blank check? Wouldn't it be good if God just wrote you a blank check? And tell you to put whatever. Somebody said, well, I want money. Somebody can say, Lord, I want to heal body. If God gave you a blank check right now, what would you write on it? And he tell you, you can go to heaven's bank and cash it. Because you got to fill in the check with your name. Because it's got God's name at the bottom. And then you have to fill in the amount. And then you have to write what it's for. If he gave you a blank check right now, what would you put in? That's past. Why are you doing that? That's what faith is. Yeah. Yeah. Faith is a blank check. Yeah. And God said, command you me. Ask, ask. Try me. Prove me. See when I, I'll open the windows of heaven. I'll pull you out of blessing. Some of y'all, but some of y'all man running like crazy. I, now I want a house. No, I want a car. No. I, 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 want, I, I want cash. No, no. Can I can I write? No, you can't give it one thing now. <laughs> okay, you can't give me one thing. You got what? okay. I, if I get the money, I, I I stay. I stay. I believe God later for my healing. If I get healed, then I believe I will make the money. Well, I got some of y'all right now. You got a blank check, and God say, fill it out right now. What you want? What are you gonna ask for? Lord, I want another house. Okay, you get another house going to do about the, the rest of it. Okay, if you get a, a Lord, I'm on $100,000. What you going to do on $100,000? You can't buy healing. You're $100,000 sick and then you you, cut, you check out of here and somebody else got $75,000. All you spent was twenty five. dollars You know, I, 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 would, I would just feel when I got mine, I would just tell God, I want more of you. Because if I make the check out for more of you, that means if I get more of you, I got money, I got healing, I got peace, I got all the other things. I just want more of you. What did the scripture say? David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Whew. Jesus. We're going to seek for it. Then after we seek for it, then we're going to do it. Then after we do it, we're going to tell somebody else, this is how you get blessed. Man, if you want to get delivered, if you want to get rid of problem, get saved. You want to go to college, be somebody, get saved. You want to be who's who in heaven, get saved. I say who's who. Who's who in? Get saved. And when you get saved, whoo, just give your life to him. Then he opens all doors. Somebody that's not saved, you know what you need to write on the check? Lord, save me. And then you get everything else. Everybody's standing to your feet. I'm feeling. Woo! Boy, look at that present. I gave you a blank check this morning. 
that's written on heaven. Instead of the, the treasure of the king, the king's treasure house, this check is on glory. Whatever you need. Well, I feel like Jack Johnson this morning. Ah, I feel just like Jack. I feel just like running. I feel like hollering. I feel like jumping. I'm feeling good, 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 good. Anybody feel like I feel? I mean, I, I, just, I just. Did anybody else feel like I feel? I just feel. I feel good down in my soul. Something about the name of Jesus makes me feel good. I feel good down in my soul It's something about the name of Jesus Makes me feel good, good, good That sounds really, I, I really like that song But everybody ain't feeling good Because some of y'all right here, your head's burning Because you heard the word But while you're feeling, others are feeling good Every head bowed, every eye closed, every mind on Jesus I'm making an altar call right now one of the best presents you can give Jesus is get saved.